Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 21st, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storms and Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Renato came across another interesting banker malware sample that apparently is hitting Priscilla these days. Now, this time he actually spent the time to walk us through sort of the basic steps of malware analysis, particularly if you're new new to malware analysis, uh, you may find uh, this uh, very concise overview of how you sort of get a handle on some of this more sophisticated malware quite helpful. And actually reading Renato's diary also reminded me that a couple of weeks ago he wrote about some of the infections we have seen with crypto miners. as well. Uh, that stuff is still going around. The latest victim apparently is Tesla. Tesla's Kubernetes pods were infected with crypto ransomware. Now, in addition, they also got some AWS credentials here that potentially exposed some sensitive data. But as far as the crypto coin miners go, they played a couple tricks here that uh, made it more difficult to detect those miners. First of all, they did use their own semi-private mining pool. That way, the chances of having those mining pool IP addresses show up in some of the feeds, like the one that we publish, are a lot smaller. The other thing they did is they actually then put Cloudflare in front of their mining pool. That way, the connection that was observed by the victim, Tesla in this case, actually went to Cloudflare. A couple of people noticed that that some of the IP addresses that we have listed as potential mining pools are part of Cloudflare and similar services. Well, that's just sort of the nature of the beast with these public proxy services that they're used for good and evil, that yes, you know, some mining pools and so of course are using those addresses. And probably the trick I see done the least, but is probably the most effective is that, well, they didn't get too greedy. They actually watched the CPU usage and didn't let it go too high. That way, of course, uh, the regular processes were not affected by the crypto mining. And as a result, it took longer to have it discovered. Based on anecdotal evidence I've sort of seen from people writing in about it, uh, these tools, these crypto coin mining tools are almost always discovered uh, by causing a high load on system, so by crashing some of the legitimate software running on the system. And as a result, of course, you know, people are investigating and then coming across the crypto mining software. And apparently anti-malware for OS X and Mac OS is still having a hard time detecting the cold root remote access tool. This particular tool is about two years old, I think now. The source code at one point was leaked to GitHub. But in a real nice blog post, uh, Patrick Wardle is showing how this particular tool is still not being detected, even though it's clearly malicious. Interesting write up on how to also reverse engineer some of uh, these Mac OS malware samples. And one of the things I'm seeing more and more pop up are vulnerabilities in JSON RPC servers. The latest example here is MicroTorrent. MicroTorrent is a desktop application, but like so many other applications, it's opening up an HTTP RPC server, either on port 10,000 or port 19,575. The problem with this service, and again, that's typical for these type of services, is that there are some fairly critical actions that can be performed, like executing a code on the system using simple HTTP requests. Simple HTTP requests are not protected by same origin policy. So there is no fancy DNS rebinding or anything like this required. All the attacker needs to do is trick the victim to go to a web page and then use XML HTTP request in order to send a request to localhost. Since there is no special header required, this is possible just without really being inhibited by the same origin policy. 
So the result here is a remote code execution vulnerability that can be triggered by any website you visit. Well, that's it for today. If you like this podcast, then let your friends know about it. Uh, Leave some good comments at your favorite podcast site. If you don't like it, let me know what to improve about it. Uh, That's it for today. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.